All right, anything else? Then uh, let's move to the life safety items and capital improvements. Uh, so I have a couple pictures to go through today with the board. This will set up the agenda item that's uh, later in the agenda in regards to the memorandum of understanding with the uh, architect. Um, board members can't see the pictures that I have on the overhead. You may want to uh, move your seat a little bit. So uh, we had a meeting with the Forest Preserve yesterday. The uh, easement that we were requested, the fire lane easement along the north side of the building, um, where we were, the, the hopes of that was to try to get four or so cars there and do a decreased parking lot here and to leave our practice fields as is. Uh, this easement was, uh, I was told yesterday that this easement is now off the table, uh, that the Forest Preserve uh, could not grant that easement in regards to setting a precedent. Uh, or with all the other requests that they have. Uh, the positive thing that did come out of that meeting is that um, I did not, we did not end that meeting at just that, hey, there's no solution. Um, they are still willing to talk with us and there are still some uh, percentage of possibility that this might be back into play. Uh, this is the original gravel lot that the school district um, Myself and Mr. Welch, when we met with the Forest Preserve and the County Commissioner and the zoo, had originally offered to pave for the, uh, or provide funds, matching funds for the uh, zoo and Forest Preserve for them to pave this area where they currently park their staff in exchange for this parking lot. Um, based on our discussions yesterday, that option does now seem to be back on the table at what percentage of possibility, uh, I, I do not know, um, but it was a major discussion point yesterday. Um, the second option that was discussed, when we were looking for 40 to 50 cars along here so that we can do a smaller parking lot here for a total of about 100 parking spaces. Um, one thing that we left with as, as a possible second option would be to take this gate here that they close on the school district and the school district would pay to move that gate back so that the first 40 spaces would be available for the school to provide some visitor parking and some handicap parking. Uh, that second solution would still leave us with only 40 spaces there and the possibility of still doing uh, a parking lot where our tennis courts are. Um, so Marianne, can you go to the next slide? I want to show you the next two slides. This is a slide and this is the inside of our stadium. I know the people in the audience, people watching at home and the board have seen that we have some issues with the <coughs> underneath of the stadium and the pieces of concrete and plaster falling off and that's been going on for quite some time. Marianne, one more slide. This is a better picture. We've recently had the maintenance department install netting underneath the stadium because we're starting to have this happen a little more frequent than we would pre prefer. Um, with the pieces of the, the concrete in the stadium from underneath and uh, stuff falling off. And we do have uh, that locker room being used fully this summer, or, or now that this fall season is underway with soccer and boys football. Um, so we're now installed some netting and stuff as an, an additional safety measure until we get this repaired. Uh, next slide, Miriam. So what I want to talk to the board about is that there's a memorandum of understanding with our architect just to begin start doing conceptual drawings and really start to get after the project uh, west of Gulf Road. And there's some things that we know that are, are certainties. Uh, we know there's some uh, issues that we need to repair with our field, our track, the, visiting, uh, the home bleachers, the visiting bleachers, a locker room, and a concession area. Uh, the area that I highlighted in green, I highlighted in green because that could either be parking or could be tennis courts. Um, I'm assuming it's going to take us now another month or so to finally get an answer from the Forest Preserve. The thing I left the Forest Preserve with yesterday was um, at some point in time I, I need an answer. I don't want to go through another three months of possibilities and, and then end up back where we are today where there's really no options and it's, it's take it or leave it of what we currently have because we're losing some time on uh, the decision-making process, the construction process, the, the, the bidding, um, the board actually vetting out what they want to do and how they want to do it, how much they want to spend, and all those types of things. 
uh, which it will take several months to plan. So what I'm recommending to the board is that sometime uh, in August here, we either do another facilities meeting or a committee of the whole, or we call it a committee of the whole meeting specifically focused on facilities. But we, we need to get a meeting going uh, with the whole board, the architect, the engineers. Let's start talking about what we think we need to do for uh, the water reclamation district, what type of uh, uh, water retention and things need to occur in order to do the projects that we know are certainties. Um, our arch architect's also gonna need to do some work and some borings on our field and our track to determine if we can just resurface the track or if we have to do uh, replace the track uh, because we have some great elevation problems and drainage problems with the track as well. Um, so these are all projects that over the next six or eight months we could be working on uh, while we, we figure out what's going on with here. Um, this is a small part of the project and so we have to be cautious to not allow the green box to delay all the other work that we know we need to do. Um, as I stated before, I, I don't think at, as August 12th today, we, I have an answer for you in that uh, in the event we were able to get the 120 or 130 parking spaces in this lot, then I think we leave the tennis courts on campus and we just put in the new tennis courts. Um, if, we, if we only get the 40 parking spaces here and they continue to lock us out with the gate when they need it, uh, then I think we have to go back to considering a, an additional parking option over uh, where the current tennis courts are. Uh, but as we work through this process with the Forest Preserve and the zoo, and I, I will say this um, so that I'm on record, I'm very optimistic. I think we can work out something. All three parties were at the table yesterday uh, trying to reach a resolution. Uh, the thing that, I was, that was made very clear to me, though, it has to be something that benefits all three parties. Um, and that's why I was uh, really pushing the gravel lot issue because they're currently just parking on a gravel lot where there's really no drainage. Uh, there's some safety issues and I think that would benefit the zoo and the forest preserve to uh, get the ability to get that paved. There was some concern from the zoo's perspective uh, where their staff would then park and um, you know how they would be able to get to their offices and some things like that. So there's some things that still have to be worked out. Um, as I stated earlier today in the newspaper that there has been no decision. Um, no, nobody formally said no to anything except with, in regards to the easement that we originally had hoped uh, to get. But at the, the, the possibility of the, that gravel lot and the, the chances of us gaining full access to that parking lot, there's still a small percentage of that uh, being a possibility, then I think um, we need to provide ourselves a window of time for me to continue to work with the other two organizations to try to negotiate uh, some type of deal. Marianne, next slide. We've already identified three sections of roof that will need to be repaired uh, in the summer of 2015. I need to get these bids out somewhere around December or January. That's when most roofing bids go out and that's when you have your best chance of getting prices uh, that are competitive. So although it's uh, only August, that's really about four, four and a half months away from when I need to start bid, uh, you know, making sure that we have the architect full bore on uh, under her scope of work of what we want her to do and DL, their company to do. And uh, we got to start getting our roof bids out. On top of that, we would start needing to do the bids for the demolition um, that needs to occur at the stadium as well as what type of permitting and what. And then once we start making a decision on what type of scope of work we want the architect to do, there's going to be additional meetings for the board that we're going to have to make decisions on. Uh, the sizes of the locker room, the concession stands, how many restrooms, those types of things. And all that will have an impact on how much flood control and additional uh, work will need to be done with the MWRD. And all that takes time and months of permits and things like that. So um, we need to make sure that w one thing's not slowing up the other thing. And uh, right now we leave a, maybe a to be determined over the area that's our current tennis courts until we get more information from the Forest Preserve and we're actually forced to make a decision. Uh, I don't think we're at that point right now, but we are at a point to where we need to get the ball rolling with the rest of the other projects. Um, I'm not sure how long the netting can hang in the stadium. That's not something we want to do for two years. Um, so those are some things that we need to be cognizant about and, and make a decision about. Marianne, I think that was all my slides, right? Yes. Does anybody have any questions on, on what I showed? Where approximately is the roof that, that represents cafeteria above the, above the library 
Uh, Marianne, can you get your arrow off of that agenda? So that goes up. So this will be uh, one of the sections of the roof is over the cafeteria, the student cafeteria, where we had a pretty significant leak this year. Another section will be over the audio visual and uh, some of the old um, uh, where, where the art wing is in some of that area. And, and the cafeteria is two stories high, so. This is mostly over the kitchen area. Okay. Just uh, just south east of our new entrance. And those are old roofs that were not prepared. <coughs> that was my second question. Those are old roofs? All old roofs that were not prepared and are not under warranty and on our zero to three year life expectancy that need to get repaired first. And we don't have a historical on when they were last. We do not. Uh, no. Kerry may have that. I know there's a key here, but I know these are in the zero to three or zero to five range. The other thing that the board needs to remember is we did get a hundred thousand dollar matching uh, construction grant last year that Tim McGinnis and myself applied for and we have that money and we need to spend it within two years so a hundred thousand dollars of what's spent on roof repairs would be matched by uh, a construction grant from the state so we need to get that moving as well any other questions for Kevin Kevin do you want to finalize a discussion on this now or you also have a first read on the uh, architect's proposal I think we, we can uh, finalize a discussion uh, whatever the board feels comfortable at some point in time uh, we, we did promise the community that there was going to be a second facilities meeting a second public meeting that was focused just on facilities and some of the issues I'm discussing with the board tonight whether that occurs uh, with the, the board's facilities committee and then we do a committee of the whole after to, to vote on some direction for the architect um, or whether we do a committee of the whole meeting dedicated strictly to just facilities um, we, we, need, we need to start uh, making some general decisions so that we can get our uh, architect fully under contract for this project and that we can get the ball rolling in some of the other areas while we wait to hear back from the forest preserve uh, and, the, and the, the zoo in regards to parking. So, so how does the board feel about this? Can I make it? Why brought it up for a purpose? Uh, I think we promised the community to have another facilities committee meeting on this, and we could try to tie it with the committee of the whole, but it'd be a little different. And you know, one possibility is we could even do it the same day, and that hopefully the board members could come. So that part of the idea was to have our architect there to explain the details and answer specific questions that people raised uh, and that way if we did a, you know if we maybe we'd do the if John was available we could have a facilities committee meeting say at 6 and a committee of the whole meeting at 8 and try to see if all the board members could come in here to presentation and then we could do a shorter committee of the whole and, and you could have other things at the committee of the whole then too so but why I, can't we just have Kerry have a committee of the whole meeting just focused on facilities have Kerry make her same presentation in there you would have a visitors comment center that can comment after Kerry does it and you're still having a hearing a hearing with them we're not having and, a hearing but I mean meeting. in the committee of the whole you are when you did the hearing before it was okay this is what we're gonna do we shouldn't say Let hearing me, we should say uh, meeting. Uh, uh, meeting so when you last your facilities meeting you had uh, presented what's what was the status of everything and what the next steps were and then you had people come and give uh, uh, visitors comments on it uh, and then you went back in and presented a little bit more and then you were done it's to me you're re doing a lot of redundancy if we can make a committee of the whole was focused just on facilities have the same thing have Kerry come and make a presentation have your visitors comments come in and do that you know so yeah, the primary reason we're having the facilities was the parking lot issue. Is correct? Correct. I mean, that was what, what I mean. One of the drivers was to communicate because it was concerned about the parking lot. I know it expanded. No, I want to make it perfectly clear because we made it clear to the community. The purpose was what the board said, which was to address all the construction all that needed to be done, both east and west of Golf Road. Correct. So I don't want to mislead. That was the All duty right. that was given to our committee. All right, so, okay, I, I, I misspoke, okay. okay. But what you're trying to say here is that we can go forward with the project with the parking lot issue not resolved and it still will not have an impact on the project. 
Right. Is so that kind of what you're, you're driving? Right. So well, our, we need to get it done. Forward on the project. We're not going to resolve, and, that, and I have another question with you. If the Forest Preserve was not willing to give us an abatement on property that's right next to us because of a precedence issue, why would they, why would you think a precedence issue, if we give them money to pay a parking lot, they're going to exchange for a parking lot? That's the same concept. Right. I so don't think it's going to go further anyways on that concept. I think it, I, I think it's a, a stretch, but I think, uh, that they asked that uh, I came back. That they asked for the meeting, and they they brought that idea back up. I think the idea is is that's forest preserve land with the zoo as the primary tenant, and unless the zoo has um, some specific plans of use of that land, it's already being it's already gravel and being used as a parking lot. It's a benefit to the forest preserve and the zoo to have it lined, paved, and drained in exchange appropriately. For the parking lot. Right, so the, what, the approach that I kind of took with the Forest Preserve and the zoo is that we're paying you $18,000 a year. Um, so just for easy math, I said round that to 20. Uh, for the next 30 years, that's, you know, or 25 years or 30 years, that's five hundred dollars to $600,000 we're paying to rent your parking lot. If the school district gave that to you up front to pave, for you to use as funds towards paving that gravel lot in exchange for a 25 or 30 year agreement that gives us those 130 spaces as the primary user is what I was trying to negotiate. Yeah, the parking lot wouldn't be ours. Right, it's not giving us anything. Yeah, we're not, we're not going to get that land out of that proposal, but we would get use of that land and in exchange. Is, there is a di difference. The original proposal of having an easement along the north edge of the building, there wouldn't have been any beneficial use by them forest preserve or the zoo or the zoo where this one it's a shared use there they would get a benefit even though they'd be giving us a benefit right because they can't park the public on the gravel from what I understand I think the forest preserve had some concerns that they were parking their staff and that it wasn't truly a parking area but it was being used as a parking area so if we were going to complete complete it as an official parking area that might be something of value to both the zoo and the forest preserve the zoo was going to go and inspect. Marianne, can you go back to slide one? One of the primary things that came up in the, co in the conversation between the county uh, and myself and the zoo yesterday, there's a small batch of some trees. Now some of that needs to be surveyed to see if that's buckthorn ash and some trees that might not possibly be uh, protected, savanna oaks or some of the things that they protect. Um, because the biggest sticking point with the zoo was they don't want to lose spaces. If it's going to at least keep them at the same amount of spaces or increase the amount of spaces they have, it's, they would be up for the deal. Um, so one thing that needed to be identified is, you know, if there's a small area of trees that need to be removed, where could new trees be planted? Or are these really protected trees or are these just weeds that have grown over time? And so determining to give us a, exactly how much square footage we have to put, to put a paved parking lot in there or to pave as you can see, there are already parking cars and there's rows like parking uh, for their staff already. Back to your original question. So on the, the agenda item that's in the contract, the member of understanding that works with our architect, is that's how our agreement works with our architect, is that whenever we get to new projects, we write a separate memorandum of understanding that clearly lays out uh, cost and, and scope of services and those types of things, and then it's, a blank, it's a blanketed under the general agreement. So let's just say for simple math again that there's 10 projects listed out uh, on that agreement or that memorandum. This parking issue is like one, possibly two, the parking and maybe water retention for the parking. The other eight we pretty much know need to be done, know what needs to be done and need to start getting that ball rolling. So you're correct in that we probably know what needs to be done with eight out of the 10 projects. The roofs, we gotta replace the bleachers, we need to find a space for lockers, uh, restrooms, visiting bleachers, we need to fix the water and the sewage under, or drainage underneath the tile of uh, the turf. So all that kind of stuff, we're ready, we should be starting to get moving on. <coughs> so we don't want to let one or two projects hold up the other eight. So you're correct. Any other questions for Kevin? So what about this issue about, uh, I do agree we need to have another meeting in August, but uh, Whatever is most expedient to board members' time would be 
the format that I would favor. I want to make sure we that I would put the commitment we made to the community ahead of the expediency of board members time personally. So if we could do both, that's fine. The only advantage of my suggest uh, way of doing it in other facilities is that, you know, if, people, if some of the board members can't make it, that's fine, and we could do it a little earlier maybe, and it's just preparing for the meeting too because the board delegated that responsibility to the committee. So otherwise, I don't care. So what's everybody else's? Uh, I think one question the board needs to also ask themselves is, uh, I think what Tim's saying is, if most of you can be here uh, at, at an, well, we can determine the time to start that meeting, is how much information do you need from the architect or if she brings the engineer, how much information do you need to eventually vote on this? Um, if, if, if the facilities committee meeting is going to accomplish the same thing that we're going to eventually need to bring the architect and engineer back on to educate the whole board again so that they feel ready to vote on, then we should figure out a way to combine the two or do them one after the other so that the board gets the full presentation from the architect, they can hear the questions from the committee, and we can just adjourn, go into a committee of the whole, and then have a full discussion. I agree with Tim's idea. I think it's a good one if we can make it work. Maybe it would make sense to just have that presentation of questions just happen one time. Right. So we could run a facilities meeting at 6.30 or 7 o'clock and, and put on the posted agenda that a special committee of whole will follow, immediately follow the facilities committee. And then if you run it that way, we would... The board could come and attend the facilities committee, hear the whole presentation, save see. their questions until we get into yeah. committee of the whole. Okay. Sounds <laughs> I'm fine with that. All right, Mike. The the only other thing is whether we would consider doing starting the meeting if people we have to check people's calendar maybe at six instead of seven. Uh, what I was looking at so is the I think Mike's point was if we start at seven and that goes a couple hours or two or three, then we have a committee of the whole. It would go late into the evening. Um, the I could check. With, I'll have Mary and check with board members' time. Uh, if we have to, I'm looking at the fourth Tuesday, so it sticks to our normal schedule. So that would be August 20, Tuesday, August 26th. And then Mary Ann will just determine with the committee and the rest of the board whether we start at 7 or 6.30. Uh, and we'll post it so that the committee of the whole would immediately start after. Well, at the same time, I could make either 6 or 7. So if either of us know that now, then there's less people for Mary Ann to follow up on. Thank you. Let Mary Ann know before you leave tonight what it is. All right, so we'll do a, a facilities committee uh, first. Uh, make sure that you're here. I do not want to have a facilities committee if we don't have a majority of the board here. I don't want Kerry doing a double presentation here. So the board needs to hear this presentation too because they will use this presentation when they're making the decision to vote. If I think we have issues where we don't have, uh, there's a lot of conflicts. It seems already that two for sure, and three for sure, so we're already almost halfway home, so. Okay. I'll have Marianne and I coordinate that over the next couple of days. All right, so we'll do that then. Okay, um, anything else on uh, life safety items, capital improvements? 